let's talk about unit testing with Shove and the TC Unit framework. Shove is our platform for continuous integration and continuous deployment of PLC projects, right? So I've spent a lot of time talking about the continuous deployment side of things, namely getting code pushed out onto PLCs in the field. Today, I'm gonna to take a step back and talk about the continuous integration side. We'll show you how we can run a battery of unit tests against your PLC code. And for today's demo, I will use Beckoff's TwinCat 3 as our platform of choice. I've developed a simple custom library in TwinCat that performs some basic math. This is always a good go-to for unit testing demos. And we're gonna be leveraging the excellent TC unit testing framework uh, for testing our code. Thank you, Jacob, for sharing this great tool with the world. What I have here then is a fub called FB Edition, and it's simply receiving two inputs, calculating their sum, and passing it out to the output. Simple enough. In order to test this, I have another fub called FB Edition Test, and this is calling three methods inside that fub, each of which is performing a specific test. I'll show you what one of these looks like. Here we have the 5 plus 2 equals 7 fub, so I'm instantiating the FB Edition that I want to test as adder. Then I'm calling it with two inputs and passing the output to this actual result var. And finally, I'm calling a function from the TC unit framework that lets me assert whether or not the results from my calculation match what I expected. So the expected result here comes from this variable equals seven, and we're gonna verify that these values actually match. So I can install the project here and we'll see that it's gonna build and bring it back into run mode and show me in the console in just a sec the results of my tests. Here we go. We have zero failed tests and uh, of this test suite that had three tests in it, three of them were successful. I'm going to make a breaking change to the FUBS logic and show you how Shove will catch and display this as a failed test. The sequence is pretty straightforward. I push my code changes to GitHub. Shove is notified via webhook and starts the pipeline execution on a virtual machine running in the cloud. This VM is going to clone the repository first, then it builds the code and activates the configuration, runs our tests, and finally, the test results are uploaded back to Shove for the user to be uh, able to visualize them in the dashboard. Next, I'll make this breaking change to my FUB logic, and we'll see the results as it propagates through the system. So. The simplest thing I can do here is to change our plus to a minus, assuming maybe somebody came in and fat fingered it at uh, some point in the future. Save this. And in Git client, I will commit my changes and push them up. Um, break the fub. Let's say what we're doing. Now let's take a look at what's happening in shove. We can see that shove initialized the build as it received the webhook from GitHub. And it's going to take a few seconds here to get things ready. Next, it's checking out the branch that we just pushed to, uh, namely main. And while it's doing this checkout, we can talk briefly about what we expect at the end here. I'm looking at the TwinCat unit test pipeline and shove, and specifically at the packages section. In this section, you can see that I have a number of artifacts or packages that have gotten uploaded to shove as a result of each of the prior pipeline executions. Um, at the top left, you can see what commit it triggered off of, and we'll get a new set of artifacts once this pipeline run is done. But for the time being, let's see if we can correlate this back with Git extensions. And actually, uh, you can see that we just proceeded to the next step, which is running our tests in the cloud. Um, Correlating this though, 6FCB8A1, you can see that corresponds to a prior commit. And right now we're running tests for F21308C, which is the latest commit that I just pushed up. And if you have GitHub credentials in place, you can open this up and see, hey look, here's the change that I made. So we're running these tests on my latest commit and we'll get results in just a moment. All right, you can see that my test run completed and it's telling me that it finished building uh, this particular commit. Notice that there's an exclamation mark here and we'll see in just a minute what that means. I can refresh my packages view and we ought to see the new test results. And here they are. F21308C has resulted in an unstable build and you can tell by the color of this 
line on the left that's indicating that the build is unstable. If I look at these artifacts more closely, we'll be able to get more information here too. Opening up the pipeline result.log, for instance, I can see which build ran and that the final result was that it was unstable. It failed at this test stage too. Uh, the more interesting result though is gonna be this HTML document, which is a rendering of the test results that um, we received from TC unit. So you can see that we had um, two tests here, two plus two equals four failed and that makes sense because we have a subtraction in place instead of an addition. However, zero plus zero continued to succeed. So that's the basics of running TwinCat unit tests with Shove. We've similar tooling in place to run unit tests with BNR projects and may feature it in an upcoming video. If this content would be useful to you or others you know, please get in touch, like, or share. We look forward to hearing from you.